figure, out. Let's figure this out. Right. All right, uh, Dan Rose, how are you, sir? What's up? It's uh, you know, it's 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 Friday. Well, um, it can. It's going to be Friday uh, for the rest of the day. I don't know. Hey, well, uh, well, how to break the news yeah. to you on that. Hey, well, it, it didn't come soon enough. I uh, yeah, long long week, right? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I got um, I did. If this um, if this week were like uh, a disease, I would say it was shingles. Ooh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's uh, you know, that's a rough one right there was, yeah. for some reason. So uh, let's uh, let's hope that it gets mm-hmm. better. It's a it's a short uh, time frame there. All right. So what's that, what else is up? How do you how do you deal with a shingles week? You um, cold forty five. I mean, like <laughs> buckets of it. <laughs> just sort of just okay. You know? Well, Dad, that, I'll tell you what. That's what you got. You that's combine what you got. Colt forty five and pork skins, fried pork skins. Fried pork skins. I call that a. I call that a Saturday night. I'd hate. I hate to say this, but uh, my son's on a keto diet, and for some reason, there are pork skins at my at my house. On the I, keto I apologize diet. to the universe, uh, mm. as a matter of fact, uh, for mm. that. But uh, they can't. They can't do carbs, but they can do fat. pork skins. They can do fat. Mm. It's crazy. You know, uh, well, crazy I dated world. a girl for a while. It smelled like pork skins. Oh, I just oh. felt that was really couldn't we, go anywhere. Do we need? Do we need to know that? <laughs> just question. you know, for that. people have like people have smells. Well, yeah, I guess yeah. I guess they do. I hope this this uh, <laughs> session today is not really oh, it's about just, uh, nothing to do with smells. <laughs> nothing. It's just heat. Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it's uh, Friday, too. It it's is. the end of a long week, and it hey, here tough. it is Friday. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think people uh, really do uh, feel better on the Friday going to the weekend. We're all working. We're trying to move toward um, I'm not working. Yeah, our own time and so forth and uh, have free time during the weekend. So, I, uh, every, uh, every moment of my life is free time. I mean, somebody's paying for it, but it's right. free time right. for me. <laughs> uh, so they have no idea what they're getting for their money, <laughs> no, no, no. but they're giving you money and you're enjoying it, right? So <laughs> that's that's, how, that, that's how it works. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm I'm down for that. Um, but yeah, so what's uh, what's been on your mind lately? Well, what, yeah, what's I thought, these yeah, things we, happening? You know, we we, we got to come up with someone to talk with, and I, I thought about this. Now, okay. in some ways, this, this is a little. Um, my son would say this this is a stale meme in a way. He 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 might he might he might um, criticize, but you okay. know, okay, okay, he's 47. What does he know? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think he said on the last show he was 12, I believe, but uh, okay, yeah, okay. we'll, we'll do the 12. math later. He's 12 going on 47. Okay, good. I, I thought about this because um, I've, been, I've been reading this, um, uh, this book by a Slovenian philosopher and psychoanalyst, Slava Zizek. Yes, okay. So many I read, I, I've, I've, been, I've occasionally dip into the guy's work and, and uh, reading that got me to think about some things. Sure. And um, also I was... Um, I was at home eating some uh, vegan chili on a bed of brown rice with some um, Gardein beef tips, vegan beef tips. Okay. We get some sponsorship out of this because yeah, I eat a lot I of Gardein. Think, uh, th- I have uh, no problem with all the sponsors you've mentioned so far. You could, we yeah. need to talk with those guys. Except for my uh, my Uncle Vinny who uh, in his meth lab. That was the one he had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Uncle Vinny is no longer with us, uh, okay. I understand, after the explosion. Yeah, it was an so. ex- explosive venture. <laughs> But um, so, I, but I'm I'm also and then there was one of them YouTube's come up and talks about the black pill, you know. Yes. Oh yes. Now I the remember. Black pill. We, we had, talk about. It. We had a little bit of a text back and forth about that just about a the, little yeah. bit. I, I was confused because I was thinking, well, we had the red pill, we had the blue pill, well, and you got, now the black. There's also the white here. pill. There's oh, a black the pill, pill, a white pill. There may be other pills, but but there, and and the way to think how this might be relevant and maybe useful to some is that I don't there know if is there's a rainbow pill. But go ahead, All could right, be good. That gonna... was last week. That was last week. <laughs> That's right. Um, if you know that scene in the Matrix, yes, where um, um, Bob Hope is. I mean, that's, that's no, not, no, no, that's, that's, no, 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 that's, no, that's, 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 uh, that's not, no, not <laughs> well, even that didn't happen, okay. Uh, uh, nobody, nobody remembers who Bob Hope is. I'm remember? the only one in the room, <laughs> okay. and, and probably listening ever to this, but uh, <laughs> okay. go ahead. So there's this idea that um, in, in the film, um, uh, I think it's Neo is the good guy, right? Right, right. So he's being confronted by um, Orpheus, right? Is Orpheus? Yes, or, yes. Orpheus. Orpheus. And he asks him. He says, "Look, you know, now that you know things, you can take, um, you can take the blue pill, and you can go back to sleep, and this never happened. If you take the red pill, you're going to wake up, and you're suddenly going to see what how things really are. And you have two choices. Uh, yes, yes. So he chooses the red pill, and he wakes up, and then boom, he sees how things are. Well, a few years back, um, 
my son would say longer than a few years back, there was this notion of being red-pilled and how you could get woke. And that both the left and the right use this as sort of a way to talk about things, that um, to be red-pilled is to suddenly be aware of things. Um, uh, it was often talked in uh, the alt-right community and even in some of the incel community about how you, you, you suddenly see how, uh, how things really are and and um, uh, different forms of woke. On the left, it could mean uh, something different as well. But again, it's just this state right. of wokeness. Yes, uh, waking up to a new mm -hmm. understanding, new vision mm -hmm. of what's really going on behind the scenes, uh, in other words. Well, there's a um, wonderful scene in uh, the Zizak film. I think it's in The Pervert's Guide to Ideology, but it may be in The Pervert's Guide to Film, where he replays that scene, okay. and where he's in Neo's place, and he says, I want a third pill. I don't want either one of these. Okay. And um, my uh, my son's always wanted the third choice. When I, I'd read in the parenting book to give them either you want to do this or you want to do that, and they always yeah. uh, that's some, why he's eating pork reason. skins. <laughs> really, he should have from whatever from another whatever you did back then. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's there's coming. a lot of things undoable <laughs> that happened. That's back right. Then, so but, now uh, he's we'll uh, see what happens. He has a diet of pork skin. <laughs> if he came up with a pork skin diet, I don't know how that would work. It's but. It's, uh, it's somewhere in this keto diet, but it's don't ask me, and I'm not interested. Thank yeah, you. Keto, yes. <laughs> um, but so, so that there, there, there are. Um, it well, Zizek's point is, is that there is a way in which we may think that we've been woke, but that's actually an even greater trap. That to think that you suddenly see things clearly may be to be even further embedded and further trapped in the in things. So to and um, a wonderful example that he uses is that. Um, um, in California, um, they ban straws, and now lots of people are buying um, metal straws they take with them. They go to restaurants. Right, okay. Right, okay. okay. That makes and sense. so this could be an example of being red pilled, for instance, suddenly you realize the straws, and you know, and the reason why they ban the straws is because um, um, I think the, the, the straws were. Um, uh, affecting Liza Minnelli somehow. I don't know. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> well, I, 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 what I was thinking was there's so much plastic that that's it's, it's, suddenly in the ocean we have this okay, no, there's, nation of there's plastic. There's a lot of plastic in Liza there. Minnelli. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm uh, I was trying to move through that, but it, it, <laughs> okay, I, didn't, I didn't get okay, very then. far. Go ahead. Is now. she still alive? Uh, yes. Okay, Katie. <laughs> okay. It's the plastic. So it lasts forever, <laughs> but uh, but the um, okay. uh, so so too much plastic. It's like killing turtles. Right, and stuff, right. right? So they went to paper in California, made it a law, and mm. moved on. Yeah, okay, okay there's nothing wrong with limiting plastic use, carbon f footprint. But the problem potentially that is, as opposed to dealing with the root of the problem, of thinking about wait a minute, what is you know why why do I live in a world where 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 things are going into the ocean? What's what are the broader things going on here? you simply affect a small local change that may have no big consequence whatsoever. Right. Um, another right. example that Zizek gives is if you go to um, Starbucks and you buy a, ca a Frappuccino or a Crappuccino, whatever you buy there, and uh, every time you buy one, you get a dollar goes to um, support a third world country, a family out of poverty. Okay. And Zizek said, so again, nothing wrong with helping, but... Why would you question? There's a bigger question. Why do we live in a world where there we have actually there's enough of everything, but there are people starving? So the the question would be: You are lulled into thinking you're making a change or a difference, but you're actually just staying asleep enough in the matrix to perpetuate the very thing that has caused all these inequalities. Okay. And so right. there is um, a third pill, or maybe you decide to stay in the matrix. And you attempt to be able to understand it from within, maybe even undermine it in a way, or maybe you 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 channel it or direct it in a way that may uh, create um, uh, larger change. Um, so that's the whole idea behind, and th there that would that was the potential third pre pill for um, for Zizek. But okay. there's a this notion of the black pill. This is the notion that you wake up and that everything is crap, and it's a form of nihilism. Okay. It's the idea that when you really see how things are, you say, um, man, uh, there's a um, philosopher, um, um, what, what is, uh, oh, what's his name? I'll think of his name, but um, okay. he, he was partly inspiration for the uh, TV series True Detective, the first season. Okay. Uh, if you ever saw that. Yeah. But he is, so. um, he's a, um, an antinatalist, and an antinatalist is someone who um, 
doesn't believe that uh, human beings should reproduce, we should just die out. Um, and he f has a, a nihilist, nihilist philosophy in which he sort of sees uh, the human race as like a bacteria. We've infected mm -hmm. the planet, and at some right. point it'll develop the right sort of antibodies and we'll all be gone. Mm -hmm. And so that is sort of a form of the black pill, sort of like you, 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 you see things and boom, everything is horrible, and so you have the potential to succumb to, to nihilism. Right, got it. There's also a white pill, and the white pill would be the ability to, uh, that would be religion, or um, in fact some evangelical um, um, folks call it the white pill, that you suddenly see that there is, wait a minute, there's God, and there every, so there's there is redemption or there is something better outside of all this and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the point of bringing up any of those sorts of pills is that each of them represent a way of being able to dance and deal with reality. Right. And all of them may have a shortcoming or they, they, they offer some sort of solution. And they have a parallel, I think, in some of the things you and I have been talking about here in terms of um, how do people engage with themselves and the world in such a way that um, – I don't want to use the word happy – because right. that's a pill right. in of itself. As an aside, there's right. a, um, a famous philosopher, Elaine Badu, and he talks about, he calls it the happiness industrial complex. Oh, okay. And that um, part of what drives, uh, if there were a happiness pill, for instance, it comes in the form of, um, he uses, uh, Zizek talks about this too, of Western Buddhism, that we all need to start um, buying meditation apps and right. doing Yoda, yoga, doing Yoda. Don't do Yoda. No, don't do that. <laughs> but, no, uh, I got you. Though. There's a couple of jokes in there. I'm not going to go uh, there. No, I know. I know. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's, it's good that you can uh, hit on it and then go back to it, the topic. That's because I, I woke I'm, up at four this morning. I'm, I'm tired. That's only that's the only reason. The, but Yes. So so the, the idea that um, – where was that with this thing? Oh, it was uh, the um, uh, yoga or um, and all this sort of stuff and meditation and all those – are a form of um, either the black or the blue or the red pill. They could be the blue pill because they allow you to become better consumers, better mm -hmm. cogs in the machine of capitalism without mm -hmm. ever really questioning things. Like, for instance, again, if you – why do we need to meditate more? Mm -hmm. uh, the things that you feel, the fact that you can't sleep or the fact that you have um, – you're always anxious Maybe something you need to know as opposed to being um, – um, numbed from and the goal would be how do we engage with ourselves that would be a wonderful example of that there is an engagement with your own suffering in such a way that may inform you maybe how to change your life may be able to inform you on how to be able to make the lives of others better but none of those are the sort of pills that offer a fix that either give you a uh, numb you into sleeping or give you a false sense of being awake and so um um how does all that sound? Well, it's it's really interesting because I, I you know the whole idea of being woke and mm. and becoming I don't know if we've defined that very mm. well. I mean, it's being woke to my ideas mm -hmm. and you going along with my ideas versus being woke mm -hmm. to the general consensus. So some groups will consider you woke mm -hmm. uh, and others may not mm -hmm. at the same time. So mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just uh, curious about how we define uh, being awake. But it's awareness. It's it's more mm -hmm. than what we're aware of now. It's mm -hmm. an additional awareness or larger awareness well how's that sound could yeah, you i dig that if even the term woke is already in a way carries with it um a certain ideology a certain um politics and a certain texture that allows you to be maybe closer to something important but it also may keep may keep you may blind you to some things because the if they were to offer a critique even of the notion of being woke um, does that mean you're always awake? That you never have to worry about going to sleep again? Um, that means that now you have a hold of a certain truth, and does that mean now that um, if you're not careful, if you have a hammer, everything is a nail? Right. There, there's a, there's a, there's a potential trap in there too. You know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The idea that you've got the best idea or mm -hmm. your idea is the way it is mm -hmm. for uh, others, and it may not be that way. Mm -hmm. In fact, it may be. Maybe you woke and it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, well, it's interesting because or, not, uh, or really not realistic. Maybe not. Well, well uh, and Beyond talks about this. I talk about that guy sometimes. But also, Shishak uh, mentions this in um, in uh, the, the the book that I'm reading right now, and um, the idea that um, we don't wake up. 
from a nightmare or a dream because um, as a way to escape the unpleasant thoughts of the dream, we wake up so we can avoid, so we can go to sleep from the truths that the dream are trying to tell us. Wow. And so waking up is actually a form of, of avoiding something, uh, a suffering inherent. Uh, Zizek would say a hard kernel that you can't do something with. And uh, that sort of puts that on its head. So even the idea of being woke. Um, yeah. It, it may not, as you mentioned, happiness. It may not make you happy to be woke. As a matter of fact, it may bring more anxiety into your life uh, that you have to have that sleep you're talking about. Well, it's just a, a wonderful example, like a, of, and they often talk about the the historical texture and the context of all the things that we we do, and um, we often have this uh, this view. Um, um, that there was a thing called the Dark Ages, and right. people ran around and they were dumb, and they didn't they thought the Earth was flat, all this sort of stuff. And and then we think, look back, and we look back. But you know, you and I are both mm-hmm. here in the South, and we look back and say, so there was a time when we were, you know, we had slavery, but we're, we've passed that. We're, we're now, and so this notion of progress that we've moved, that there is a place in the past that we can point to as a marker of how much we've grown and how better we are. Um, folks like Zizek would like to turn that on the head because um, de- depending on how you look at it, there are actually more slaves in the world now than there ever were before. And that mm-hmm. to prop up the first world, we have to crush so much of the third. That even as we speak, there are children being worked to death uh, for um, um, the the elements that go into our phones or... Um, Mm-hmm. All of these things, the diamonds that we wear, and that um, for us to be in this place of comfort, to prop up our luck requires that there a that there is a uh, an ocean of suffering, wow. and that um, we are floating on that ocean. And to wake to that would be too much. To think, and your uh, I'm uh, as you know uh, I may have mentioned this, but I'm a vegetarian. Yes, I mentioned that before. Um, yes. And I remember the, um, the, the when I suddenly decided to become a vegetarian. I was at this club um, um, in uh, in in Fort Lauderdale, and PETA, not right. the bread, but no, the organization. organization. Right. They had this this these things going on. They had these videos, and so we had to walk through a gauntlet of of uh, of these um, mass farming. Uh, videos and you know and all these sorts of things and you'd walk through it and you're like holy cow and then when I got here I was like I-, I can't unsee that and so that can be a form of being awake um, if you if it became it becomes a, an ideological trap and maybe a tad fascistic if it becomes the one thing that you devote yourself to and you say to yourself, if we all became vegetarians, the world would be perfect, right? Right. So, yeah, somebody could have that idea. And, you know, and there, there are so many different flavors of that, that, you know, um, um, from um, elements of Catholicism to elements of, um, of ecological awareness, feminism, all these things, if you're not careful, whatever truth they have and whatever importance they have, they can become a unitary, a single thing, and as opposed to being able to move and make changes in the world, you're often sort of trapped by them. They offer right. you an answer to the conflict that ails you, but it keeps you from being able to uh, move outside of that. You're trapped by it, and that's always a problem, I think. I, I, it seems to be that we're just swapping um ideologies in some way. I mean, we, we thought we believed that now we have something more as we are woke. And, uh, but it, it partitions us off into, into groups or even an individual, but certainly into a group. Mm-hmm. And then there's always the opposing group. So mm-hmm. you never quite finish this job of being woke, it seems like. It's interesting because, uh, again, well, you know, Zizak's sort of a Marxist. And um, one of the things that... Um, a Marxist critique of diversity is that um, uh, the more we uh, begin to um, identify with certain tribal groups, the less likely we are to unify in a way that may generate global change. You know, a Marxist uh, equation is that it's the um, that it's class conflict. 
right. that uh, the workers are being uh, uh, crushed by um, 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 the owners of, uh, of capital. And so uh, if we fix that, it'd fix everything. But um, there is this critique that um, if, um, if we stay divided, and uh, this is Zizek, not me, but he talks about how, like, whenever, um, whenever we recognize the suffering of a subset of our population, and I think the most recent would be um, the uh, transgendered individuals, that we run the risk of not allowing the truth they bring to the table to arrive. Instead, what we do is we find a way to sell them jeans and tennis shoes and make all sorts, they become just another th um, uh, tribal contingent that we can sell goods to. And the goal is that you they become uh, a market share instead of a force for change. So. No, and it seems like it's economics, but also the politics of things at the time when you're using the market, uh, the, the, the Marxist reference that it, it is uh, uh, sort of that entire nation was, mm -hmm. was dealing with that. And based on that philosophy or that ideology that had both politics and economics mm -hmm. and people's well-being and mm -hmm. the differences in class. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of class. You've hung on me, right? You'd realize I got class. Man, do you have class? <laughs> I got class. <laughs> I said that Actually, in about an hour, I got class. No, hey, it's funny because because we also you and I would talk to, once you know about uh, there's this guy Jordan Peterson. Yeah. You're a big fan. You got yeah. a tattoo. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where. I'm not going to tell anybody where it is, but he can make it dance. Okay. <laughs> and uh, but uh, uh, you got yes, we have you, talked you like, about you, Jordan, you, Peterson, Jordan Peterson. Yes. And um, he represents sort of a, a response to this in a way. Um, he re if if Zizek's response comes from the left. Um, Peterson's comes to the right, and his idea seems to be that there is a, um, and it's at the most conservative uh, thought is the, the idea that there are some core beliefs, some things that are um, um, inherent to Western civilization or civil civilization in general, and those need to be um, held on to firmly, and they are often in, in uh, uh, we run the risk of losing them. So, um, um, for Peterson, it's individuality, it's right. um, personal responsibility, yep. and so as opposed, so uh, he would he would um, he would espouse that as uh, as uh, the thing that we need and the thing that is missing, and that um, the further we move away from those sorts of things, from central myths, Christianity and things like that, they all anchor us and tether us, and that he is um, he's very skeptical of any notion of progress. Right. Because um, he often uh, his criticism uh, with with Marx, he had a debate with Zizek. It wasn't really much of a debate. Really. I guess it was a debate, but um, he kept um, his thought was that um, uh, the folks who dare to uh, to um, create change in the way Marx was advocating don't really know what they're th thinking. They um they have run the risk of losing something central and important, and then something bad is going to happen. So you know, Peterson's battle cry is "Clean your room." You know? Right, right. Yeah, he he wrote the twelve step uh, yeah. of uh, that. I'm not I'm sorry, blocking on the title right now, but it's one of his latest books. So the the notion is personal responsibility. Yeah. Um. Really? I'm not very good at that. I was going to say, uh, not really that, but what I was going to say was that it's a nice idea to take that personal responsibility and clean up your own room, clean up your own house, mm -hmm. uh, make sure your thoughts and your mm -hmm. what, your progression, as mm -hmm. opposed to progressives in larger sense, but the But the, here's progression. a progressive critique of that, though. While you're busy cleaning up your room, you're not noticing all the mess around you. So you literally have, have, have taken the potential for... The movement of the species, of uh, the potential for things to move forward, and now you're simply focusing on your dirty socks. So right. it, it's it could be a form of um, of the blue pill. It could be a way of forget about the possibility of changing things, forget about the possibility of growing the world in some ways. Just go home and clean your room. Right. And right. so revolution becomes um, uh, either delayed, minimized. Or it's done away with, and 
So but I guess your room be clean. Yeah, and that uh, not the group think that we were talking mm-hmm. about. Okay, so the idea of the black pill mm. bring us. Uh, that's what? the that's nihilism. Yeah. So when you say, but isn't that the personal responsibility? I mean, the nihilism is, if I understand it right, mm. uh, that you uh, a lot your of- enjoyments of your own personal life and and so forth and you don't see a a, a way of going forward well uh nihilism you to enjoy this yeah. now I, well i think um that would be that is a form of nihilism um um i think in in its broadest perspective it is um it is a sense of the futility of everything and the pointlessness of everything of everything and that could hedonism is a form of not could be considered a form of nihilism right right um it's like suddenly you just, you know, join Motley Crue. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> it's like, uh, yes, so I understand it. So, um, so many pills to choose from at like this like point in time. Yeah, so, yeah, so and I know where, where, of, where does a person go with this? Well, these you, here's, here's here. what I think that could be useful in thinking about this is that, is that um, um, in each of these ways of thinking about the world, they're all a good start. I don't think any of the pills necessarily is 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 bad, be it white, black, red, or blue. The blue one might be somewhat problematic because it simply asks you to be able to go back to sleep. But maybe there's nothing. But, but there there may be a benefit in that. I think the thing to ask is their beginnings and not the end. Um, I think I've talked about this before. If somebody comes in for for therapy and they sit down on the on on the couch and they say i want to commit suicide i want to die um that is a that's a good place to start it'd be a lousy place to stay for too long and a lousy place to get stuck but that's an okay start that is where you were at and to meet someone in that place is the beginning of being able to move to do something with it each of those pills i think uh, uh, offer the uh, the possibility if um, um, with the red pill if you are suddenly awake to something that you weren't before how do you move forward with that how do you dance with it how do you make it a truth that um, can be both particular and universal in its application that and especially be- if it contradicts something you've believed in before right? as a result of it you, you grow think of um, I mean in my lifetime um, I have watched um, with um, well, with, well, women's rights, uh, feminism, um, there is suddenly new ideas enter, entered the world, and there were those who may be extreme on either side. Um, I think it's Andrea Dworkin who said all heterosexual sex is rape because women can't possibly consent because they're, uh, they're you're under inequality. Um, and as an extreme statement... Right. And but it 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 functions in a way like a bit of poetry or metaphor. It 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 certainly could wake you up. But then what do you do with it? Right. Where do you move with it? And I think that is the thing that each of these pills asks. Not that one is better than the other. Um, to suddenly, um, um, for instance, uh, in with Nietzsche, nihilism is a step toward being able to create your own life. Uh, you saw something similar with the existentialists and whatnot that. There's something about the uh, the realization of futility or absurdity that could plunge you in despair, or it could mean you can do things that you couldn't do before. Well, it certainly that certainly makes sense to me. And you know, just a while back we talked about the euthymic window. This mm-hmm. this my uh, favorite band. So, yeah, uh, I got it. And uh, on this continuum of really, because the extremes are not healthy, mm-hmm. somewhere in the middle and finding yourself um, available to the moment and mm-hmm. and uh, really engaged mm-hmm. in the process. And if you think about that notion of the euthymic window, um, it, it's more probable that at each developmental phase and as as we grow the window has to grow with us we have to be able to accept more or less based on where we're at and that requires some flexibility that requires our ability to be to dis, to be disturbed and suffer enough to do something with it so we uh, again that guy be on I talk about him all the time mm-hmm. uh, the idea that we have to grow a mind uh, I think I've used this example in the past and here that you know, before I I was I didn't have a child until I was uh, forty, and uh, 
at the birth of my son, just as I was in the process of fathering a son, my son was sonning a father. Um, I had to grow and he had to grow and I had to grow both. Mm -hmm. I've never had a 12-year-old boy as a son and he's never had me as a dad. And so it is a, a two-way street. There is, and there's something about the needing to be opened. Um, there is, um, it, uh, it isn't that my son maybe uh, and I woke each other and continue to woke each other, but we do generate moments of in that euthymic window where we feel wonderful things, but we also feel not so wonderful things. And each of those, it requires us to be something more than we were the year prior. Um, if that makes any sense. No, it absolutely yeah. makes sense. And uh, th these sort of developmental things are going on at the same time. And then you still, you have to relate. You have to build a relationship between the two of you mm -hmm. in that case. And, uh, you know, it's not always the easy thing to do, mm -hmm. uh, sort of the acceptance of the other mm -hmm. father-son issue. And that's where that, that notion of, like, there's, there's a, there are forms of emotional fascism. There are um, familial totalitarian states in which um, the growth of the other is too much. Um, it is um, when my when my son's interest and his development does not coincide with the image I have of what I want him to be. I'm suddenly confronted with a tension. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, there is a minimal, at least sometimes maximal amount of suffering in that moment. And what do I do with it? Right. You know, I, you know, do I, um, you know, beat him until he puts the football helmet on, or do I? No. <laughs> well, it's that, a, that's not one. It's a lot of work. That's you're not saying one. it's not a lot of a lot. Or, or do I say, okay, this, this, there is something about who he is and how he is ising himself, how in his going on being, he may be forcing me to go on being in some ways that I haven't had to do before. He, he pushes and pulls me out of my comfort into someplace new, just as I do that by my presence to him. And we sure. do that dance together, dancing forward towards something that neither of us can com completely name, though there is some sort of cultural mandate on where we're headed. At some point he leaves the house and I don't longer have to pay for things. Um, having adult sons, uh, let me just uh, break that myth right there. <laughs> he will continue. <laughs> this note. At some this point, he's going to start making me money, right? At some right. point, I, I'll get some of this back. They'll be like... Uh, Dad, can you loan me is not a real <laughs> not statement, a, by the way. Can you loan no me money? Interest. <laughs> no, can't, there's like, no interest. There's no, there's no principal either, so... <laughs> yeah, well, I never had trouble. those. I don't have principles. Well... <laughs> Nice. All right. So I'm glad you got that comment in. All right. So what do we do? I mean, I let's say uh, if someone um, is woke, one of these ideologies, taking one of these pills and sort of seeing something in a different way, in a new way that mm -hmm. maybe challenges them and their thoughts, or maybe not. It's just a, a bit of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody took the pill. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to have that same reaction. There's always going to be this tension you mentioned, the, the, the push and pull between people who, who agree and don't agree and mm -hmm. have different versions of mm -hmm. what it should be like. Mm -hmm. That seems to be an eternal struggle in some ways for us. Well, and, and th th this is a component in, um, in, uh, in uh, we mentioned the Zizek guy. He makes a point in saying that, um, that conflict is inherent even down to the level of physics, that, you know, that... Um, we have this notion that um, 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 there's a guy named Todd McGowan. He made a statement that the ultimate um, – again, he's – this sounds political, but it has a point. The ultimate okay. conservative notion is it is what it is. Right. So uh, – and that's the um, – I think that's a law of non-contradiction. A is A. B is B. A is not B. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, – but at the level of, of – um, of, of of physics, quantum physics, this all becomes they get it becomes blurred. We don't have there seems to be something inherent in the very structure of the world around us that makes it fuzzier than we would like it to be. Right. And you know Freud's version of mental health is the capacity for ambivalence, the capacity to entertain that A may not just be A, it may be other things as well, and that there is flux and there is flow and there is tension and it's inherent in things. And um, uh, that may be a state that we may need to be able to find ourselves in. 
um, at various points, uh, both uh, not just as a as a nation or as a culture, but individually, the um, the person who comes in and sits on the couch and says, um, "I want to die." The reason that's a good start is um, there's the possibility of them seeing in uh, in in the word suicide something more than just what it is on the surface that there is a complexity and inherent in there it may begin that they want to die but that it may go to a place that they want parts of themselves to die right. and it may be that they want to go that the feelings they have they want those to go they want the life that they find themselves trapped in dead we begin in a place where there's an isness it is what it is that um, that if we stay in there too long it becomes like a shell uh, we can't uh, we can't grow out of but over the course of the work that we do it begins to mean more and more and more than what initially sounded nihilistic and destructive is ultimately liberating because it started us on some path towards something uh. no I, li I, li I like the idea uh, there's a there's a bit of what you were saying a, a moment ago about uh, this awakening and this, I this idea of, of new ideas and new ideology um, but but it also can become uh, sort of self-centered in a way, maybe even narcissistic. And we've yeah. talked about that yeah, plenty did. of times uh, yeah. on the show. So yeah. um, <clears throat> it's it's the ability to empathize and connect with other people. I think that's a mm -hmm. that's a basic issue mm -hmm. that we've mm -hmm. kind of and think about the gone empathy and with. connecting with yourself, the empathy and to connect with ideas, to be able to there there is something when you see yourself and someone is whole. That wholeness, in a way, is a metaphor for a um, a certain level of chaos held in tension. It is that there is a, a complexity there. There is there is a muchness, not a too muchness or a too little, but it is it is pregnant with something. And I think, in some ways, that's the opposite of narcissism. The narcissist sees both themselves and the world in a way that they are trapped in, um, and your ability to move into something more complex and something more fluid allows you the opportunity to grow. The narcissistic position is ultimately one that is useful but simply defensive. Just like the person who comes in mm. and says that they want to die. That's also in mm. some ways a defensive position. It may be the best thing they can come up with in light of all the suffering they're feeling in this moment. Hence it's a good place to start. You always have to start somewhere, and that's as good a place as any. But you have to keep moving. Yeah, especially when you, you struggle so much in your personal life that you're going mm -hmm. to a therapist and you're mm -hmm. going to finally say what you've been thinking and feeling mm -hmm. on the inside and allow a person to connect with you and have a discussion about that and maybe see some options for yourself. As long as the insurance is good. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's true if you're in private practice, I suppose. Right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> all right, well, people have to make a living, but I'm, th I'm thinking all that's coming out wrong here. On the <laughs> that's video, it, but, it's, sorry, yeah, it's but, not a, <laughs> i got to make a living. Yeah. i got to afford a boat. A boat. Um, do you want to rethink that maybe? I don't yeah, know. I don't really I mean, want a I boat. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> much for it. Uh, I could put it in my pool, I guess, like a dinghy. Yes, you know? <laughs> get a small boat. <laughs> Have, I just like saying the word dinghy because ding something about that just just makes me kind of giggle. Yeah, you know? it does. Me too. So there, <laughs> there we are. And I'm not sure why. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. So fi final thoughts on this in terms of just this. This uh, you start out talking about the black pill. You talked about the blue and the red pill, and even the white pill. The white pill. That'd be, that'd be religion or some so, sort of faith. So, uh, but it, it almost seems that there could be. Uh, I don't know an infinite number of uh, of these pills, depending mm -hmm. on the particular mm -hmm. ideology or awakening mm -hmm. or enlightenment mm -hmm. that a person may have. Well, maybe the takeaway is this: is that regardless of the pill, uh, all of those pills might be a good start, but if they offer the possibility of some sort of permanent change, if they offer a solution with a capital S, then to be wary of them. That um, um, they are. Um, they're potentially a trap, and right. that um, there is just as another part of the reason why I use the uh, my example of my my son is that it's a place in my life that I can truly feel I'm growing whether I want to or not. Mm -hmm. He's about to be a teenager. Mm -hmm. 
the uh, I thought the level of sarcasm was high before. But we've reached <laughs> just wait level of, five. Level it's five. you know and uh, and I find myself Jeff come that's right. Yeah, that's I find myself it. you know I, I don't think I've uh, I've had this many murderous thoughts my entire uh, <laughs> you know it's like you just you, it, but. All of those, uh, that discomfort, he moves me out of that euthymic window into some place that I have the potential to be able to grow just as I move him. In those moments of, of tension and the dance between us, we move. And I, my guess is any of these pills, if we're not careful, um, there's a term that, um, since we're hanging on Zizek, tarry with the negative. And the idea is that you have to find a way to dance with these things. Um, it comes from um, the philosopher Hegel in, in a, a sort of vulgar way or an oversimplified way of looking at what Hegel called dialectics is, is that there's a, um, a thesis and then an antithesis and then there is um, uh, uh, a synthesis, a com combination of those two things. So somehow, you know, if you... Uh, um, if you say, um, I want vanilla, and then somebody says, no, I want chocolate, then you come up with is it Neapolitan ice cream. Is that what it is? Yeah. That's what it is. Close. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But that's the third one. I yeah, think, there, there's this. Yeah, really? Yeah, really? the vanilla, the chocolate, and the strawberry, I think. Is that? Neapolitan, okay. yes. But that's it, Neapolitan. For the record, yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. I, didn't, I, see, I don't know my ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems wrong. It's wrong. Um, uh, all the way. But uh, uh, you keep your, you keep your ch chocolate, your ice cream separate. Um <laughs> The, um, um, but a, a more truthful form of that or a more useful form is not just some simple synthesis, but there is movement. There is, uh, you can both be, can be maintained in some sort of dialectical tension or in the movement from one to the other. Someone says you want uh, vanilla, they say they want chocolate, and you suddenly discover strawberry. There is the possibility of, um, and there's something about that that dance and that tension that is necessary. And most um, fascist ideologies, most um, um, attempts at a quick fix, run the pos ruin the possibility if you're not careful of the sort of movement you need and to continually grow. That would be one of my criticisms of of some of uh, the way. Um, uh, uh, research on happiness has been, or even right. some of the positive psychology stuff, if you're not careful, it runs the risk of, um, of ironing over an inherent tension that is necessary for us to continue to move forward in ways that we need to. Um, yeah, that tension is all, sometimes that's all we can see, all we can focus on. And it comes to this idea of knowing yourself. We talked about this in different ways, but knowing yourself and being a critical thinker. Mm -hmm. and, I'm very uh, good at being a critical thinker. <laughs> critical <laughs> thinker. Uh, but but really surveying the ideas and making some choices about things and also being empathic and the use of empathy for others and mm -hmm. connecting with the larger group. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's quite a bit of skill that a person has to have in order to make these these um, these woke moments really work and, uh, and move forward. It's a good thing that I am uh, so skilled. It's a good thing that I am, <laughs> I am a, a god among men or a... Uh, <laughs> a um, a, uh, I'm not a I'm salad not. dressing among <laughs> steak sauce, <laughs> or uh, I trying to work, uh, uh, trying to work some sort of. The, uh, this has to be the wind down of the show because I'm not understanding anything <laughs> at this point. I think I've a, missed. I did uh, say I got up at four yeah. o'clock, and I, I didn't. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Right, right. Sorry to hear that. Well, I can't yeah. tell you why. Uh oh. Because. <laughs> We're, the tape's rolling, yeah, and so, okay. my wife may hear it. And we may, okay. <laughs> Odds are not, because she gets enough of me and wouldn't put... Actually, between you and me. We may talk have about to this? censor this show somehow, <laughs> no, but go censor. ahead. Yeah, whatever. Okay, here's what happened. Here's yeah, what nobody's this. listening. Go ahead. Okay, was, okay, my wife got her hair cut. Yes. And she got it cut, pixie cut, where it looks like she's sort of like um, she may have joined the military. Right. Okay. <laughs> yes. And she decided her hair has been turning gray, that she's going to dye her gray hair gray. And so she has now, she came home yesterday with, looked as if she had joined the military and her hair is gray. Okay. And and, um, <laughs> and I talked before about about And that kept moments. you up at night. It evidently well, basically what you said a moment a growth, ago. Here's right. a growth moment, you know, because... <laughs> because um, um, she comes in with a haircut, gotcha. and I want to be supportive. I want to be kind. Sure, and loving. you do. Yes. I, I want. I want to stick to my guns that I believe that 
um, a, a, a woman has control over her body. We all have control over our bodies. No right, one should right. be telling what to do. Just right. because I am her husband, I have no more right to okay. what she does with her all body right. than anybody would. There you go. And I want to stay true to that. Well said. But at the same times, I'm a little shocked. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and 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 there is a, 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 a roiling tension. I don't know what to do with this, you know, because right. I I want to stay true to those values, but at the same time, I'm I'm a little taken aback. And well, so uh, yeah, sometimes I mean the facial expression, you may not be able to hold it, and or the words that you say, or yeah. maybe, but it's it's I, kind of a I, vibe that can be picked up on. You I peed be myself. There. <laughs> really, that was that was a nonverbal. That does that count as a nonverbal? That's a nonverbal. It's yeah. a nonverbal. <laughs> Not one I thought we'd talk about, but <laughs> it uh, is. It is. It is. And a so I did what you know. I, I I was. It was sort of a fight or flight or freeze. Right. And that that's sort of a freeze kind of thing. Right. And um, so that sort of sort of kept. Well, it's at that it's at that moment where you have to think more about how you're going mm-hmm. to approach this if you're going to uh, enter in a conversation about this at all. Mm-hmm. So there is that choice. Well, see, and, and you know, I I that there's a famous saying by. Um, by, well, it's a Wagner saying from uh, by Richard Wagner that um, what is it? Um, um, you are healed by the spear that smote you, right? So um, ah, what that means is is that in that moment of suffering, in that moment that I am struggling, there's something that I'm supposed to know about myself and her in the world. There's a place of growth, right? Right. But unfortunately, all it did was keep me up last night. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's, that, that's why I couldn't. And so I just, yeah, I finally just said, you know, I'm going to get up and okay. do things. Yeah, get some things going. But, um, okay. So, but I could have used the pill. It does sound like there might be a pill involved. It does sound like you really need to think through this in, in terms of maybe having that conversation about it. And you have a right to express yourself. On the other hand, you're married, and, uh, well, and you I, have to put that into perspective just a little. Well, I, you know, I don't know what I don't know what to do. You know, I'm, I I will. I thought about it. this is this is one of my solution, and this really is is not what we call a solution. This is, this actually is a form of of maybe the um, the uh, blue pill. Right. I thought about just taking my contact lenses out and keep them out all weekend. Right. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm, not, I'm not joking. This really was, as I'm laying in bed at night, I think I'm to myself. Not, yeah, well, we had plenty I of time. Take, you weren't sleeping, but yeah. I so could take the contact thinking. lenses out, <laughs> and then I wouldn't, and I could just delay this. So how does that um, sound? That, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> and uh, if my, in my experience, the delaying of things mean that that thing is going to come out on its own at some point, yeah. like a volcano explosion. Yeah, it's like, and you're going to say all the wrong things at could, the wrong could, time. Yeah, so, could, yeah. Uh, I could have, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it make matters worse, and this actually happened, did we um, – we, we we have a pool and um, it's one of those little plastic pools that you buy for twenty five bucks, but it's still a pool. We have a pool, no. Nope. And I I go downstairs and I'm looking out the window and I just out of the glance I say, "Who the heck's cleaning our pool?" And it was my wife. But I didn't recognize her. <laughs> okay. So okay. I'm like, "Holy well, cow! This is like you know what do I? That, <laughs> what, what do I do with this? Who is this person in my house? Oh." Yes. It's not like, you know, it's not. Uh, um, so that may, not, that, that may not be a conversation opener uh, either. So, it's uh, not like, you know, it's not. Um, um, I'll, have to, I'll have to come up with, with some. Well, way. you know, I mean, the, the marital therapists talk about, you know, acceptance um, yeah. and this idea of accepting the other. So maybe it's something you can work on between now and. The next time you see her, which is about <laughs> 10 minutes from now. Or Here's what I think I'm, I'm going to start. How about, can I start the conversation? Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> is that a good start? Uh, uh, is this no, that's a, a, not a good start. A, not a passive, but an actively aggressive attempt to destroy my soul. Can I start there? <laughs> um <laughs> As you said, it may not all be about you in this thing. <laughs> so, maybe, maybe, uh, yeah. I'm just uh, keep an open to. mind about that and, um, you know, enjoy the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, uh, I might. I'll try to find a way. I will try to find. I will take that spear that smote me. Yes. And I will plunge it into that wound and hopefully something good will We'll come uh, out of it. it. Sounds like like a lot of death, and it's <laughs> headed in your direction. So, yes, it is. Uh, it is. So Hopefully, she also the odds of her ever seeing this, unless of course you send it to her. I'm uh, really. <laughs> as a matter of fact, this is going straight to her <laughs> inbox, and uh, let her decide this. <laughs> now, I, and c- consider this an intervention. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best we can uh, do. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, man, that, that's great. And listen, I, I have to say, I appreciate the conversation today, but also good luck to you uh, in, the, in the moments and minutes and hours to come. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like so. I said, it was a shingle week. Lots of shingles. Emotional <laughs> shingles. Thank you a lot. I'll see you uh, next time. Thank you.